Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the live broadcast of the World of Evangelical Ministry on Facebook. Today being Sunday, October 13, 2019. Today's topic, you must be born again. It's part of our Inheriting Eternal Life series. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your children who are hearing this broadcast or viewing it. We're also thanking you for those who will also view them, whether on Facebook, on YouTube, or some other media. Father, we pray that you open their hearts, you open their eyes, you open their ears to apprehend your word, to apprehend your truth. Above all, to see your son, Jesus, who was crucified for our sins and resurrected for our justification. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon all who we hear of you, so the enemy will not come to take that which you are depositing in their hearts this minute. All these we pray and ask for in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Like I said, today's topic is you must be born again. The Lord Jesus Christ said so. In our Inheriting Eternal Life series, we started with making it to the end. That was what we spoke of last week. So today is you must be born again. For you to make it to the end. And winning the battles between your spirit and your soul will be the topic next Sunday. After that will be sanctification. Then the other Sunday, spirit baptism, etc., etc., as you can see it on the board. The outline today, for you must be born again, is the fallen state of humanity. Second will be before the fall. The third will be the fall. The fourth will be consequences of the fall. And then came Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Then we will talk about salvation. So now we're going to go to the fallen state. And that is the position all of us are. Or where? You have come to the realization that your life is empty. Because it is empty in our fallen state. You may be rich. You may be poor. You may be in between. You may be handsome or ugly. It doesn't matter. You are weighed down with fears and uncertainty. There are too many stories. And too many storytellers. Which story and which storyteller do you believe? What really is the truth about eternal life, heaven, hell, God, Satan? Are they fictions or what? You have tried many things, ranging from membership of secret societies to practicing witchcraft, attending churches and being prayed for by many pastors, general overseers, prophets, etc., Yet, the emptiness, 
Oh, the emptiness and the sleepless nights. I've been there. Your state, if you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ, can be described. It's as a result of our fallenness. That's why we make choices that often result in more miseries. The drug addict believes that one more fix will fill the void. The murderer says, if I can only remove this impediment, everything is okay. The thief says, oh, just one more and I will stop. The liar tells the lie and says, okay, I will say again. But next time he tells another lie to cover the lie. The adulterer goes and says, yes, okay, if that's the end of the story. It will never happen again. The rich acquires more. Still the same. It's all futility. It's all emptiness. Then I hear somebody say, okay, but I've given my life to Christ. I can see many hands raised. And yet, why the emptiness? Why hasn't Christ filled the void? The fault is not that Christ has not filled a void. The fault is that did you really repent at the time you made that commitment? Did you make a U-turn from sin and a sinful life? Or that day did you go to a church building or a crusade ground with a false motive that yes, when I go there I'm going to become rich. God is going to give me everything that my heart desires. We are going to take our first reading from John chapter 6, verses 25 to 27, from the New King James Version. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. This is exactly what goes on today in many, many church buildings. In the large cathedrals and crusade grounds. It has happened before. The Lord Jesus Christ had just fed them. Fed 5,000. And they were running, rushing for him because, wow, this is it. So he can continue to feed us every day. But in verse 27 he said, do not labor for the food which perishes. All the prosperity-seeking fellows, hear me very well. That's why you still have the emptiness in your heart. That's why the void, because you are looking for the food which does not endure. Rather than looking for the Son of Man, who will give you eternal life. Praise the Lord. Please bear with me and listen attentively. At the end of this broadcast, you will indeed know if you have ever given your life to Christ. Because if you did with false pretenses, God knows. He knew. Don't matter what is different today. What is different today, I assure you, is at the end of this broadcast, you will know what is different. You will know because he will visit you. The God whom I serve, who delivered me from eternal death and emptiness in my soul 38, 33 years ago. He's still on the throne. And I testify to his goodness. I testify that he fills the void. I testify that he makes you different. I testify that he is faithful. But you must come to the cross. God is not partial. Salvation and peace of mind is yours today. He will deliver you and give you a newness of life unimaginable. If you embrace his son today at the cross. In all our broadcasts, we will guide you and help you to grow in the faith. 
Just continue to tune in. Remember, freely we have received, freely we give you. Don't believe those who say, come and give us. Why don't you believe those who are giving you the words of eternal life? Believe them because they seek nothing of yours but your soul, so that God himself will say, yes, you are doing that for which we call you. Praise the Lord. We are going to go to the second item on today's broadcast. Before the fall. God created our first parents, Adam and Eve. We are going to take a reading from Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Human beings became living beings. On that day that God created Adam and later Eve. They were alive. What do we mean by they were alive? They were alive to the things of the spirit. They had a direct relationship with God. They could see and they could hear God. We're going to take our next reading from Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Yes. God visited and visits. He was visiting them in the cool of the day. Of course, he knew what they had done on this particular day of fellowship. What happened? Everything had changed. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Why, you ask? They were in such a blissful place. They wanted to be like God. Same way most of us are today. The pride of life and the loss of the spirit. Why do you say many of us want to be like God? Just watch the churches you go to. How men and women bow to the general years. How they bow to the pastors. What do you think that is? That's the pride of life. They want to be like God. That's why they give you false prophecies and you continue to go to them. That's why they continue to ask you for things that are not biblical and you follow. The pride of life. They saw the fruit. But the point was not the fruit. It was the serpent had told them you would be like God. That was the driving force. Then they now say, oh, okay, why is it that God asked us not to eat this very beautiful fruit? The lust of the eyes. We see the beauty around us. The fruit was desirable to eat, the lust of the flesh. Amma, they need to feed their body, but there are many fruits in the garden. But this one was more desirable on this particular day. I wonder how many of us have fallen into these traps. That was the origin of the fall. Let us take a reading from Genesis chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it, then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. And so darkness fell on the earth. And it has never been the same until the Son of God came. With that singular disobedience by God's overseers, because Adam and Eve were the overseers of his creation, Creation was thrown into chaos. Not just the earth. The elements, the planets, the solar system, everything went into chaos. Why do you think we have disasters like earthquakes, hurricanes all over the place? It's all part of the fall. Because the equilibrium has been dis disorganized. And the living in the human being died. 
From that day, human beings were no longer alive. Yes. Yes, while the flesh, the body and soul of the human being was breathing, alive in human terms, but in truth, the spirit was dead. The spirit is a real animation in a human being. Remember when God put the breath of life into what he has formed? That's when man became a living being. Alienated from God. Human beings became alienated to themselves, to animals, to the environment. Human beings and animals became killers. And of course, the first fratricide took place. Ken killed his brother Abel. Diseases and death became the norm. And oppression of the weak by the strong leading to slavery has continued to this day. The strong run the world. The weak remain oppressed. But when Adam and Eve saw Abel's body, it dawned on them what God had told them. For the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. But they didn't believe. Just as many of us do not believe that at some day, if we fail to accept his son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when he calls us home, many will be disappointed. Because all of us have seen that come short of the glory of God. All of us, the moment you are born into this world, you are a sinner. Because we were all in the loins of Adam when he disobeyed God. Because we all came from Adam. But God had to make a way because of his love for us to sacrifice his only begotten son. And so came Jesus at 10 5 on outline. We're going to take a reading from John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Praise the Lord. Despite our rebellion, Despite our wickedness, God still loved us. And none was found worthy but his only son. None was found worthy but his only son. What stopped God from simply erasing that creation, starting all over again? That's what many of us will do. But God has loved what he has created and said, no, I will rescue them. Praise the Lord. So we got item six on this outline of you must be born again. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. This is where many of us miss the boat. When they make a call, we rush. But what does it mean? So I'm going to ask you today to follow me. We're all going to the cross. We have to see him whom we pierce with our sins. I want you to follow me to the cross this minute as you are listening. Because we have to see the picture of Jesus whom we crucify with our sins. Because and that picture should remain with us forever. Because he died for us. Whoever desires to be a child of God must contemplate that sin at the cross and have it ingrained forever. So as we are now at the cross, I want you to imagine, can you see Jesus Christ, the Son of God who became the sacrificial lamb for our sin, for our sin nature and sins, hanging on the cross? I want you to see him hanging on the cross. I want you to imagine that you are now in that large crowd in Jerusalem shouting, Crucify him, crucify him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Who wanted to release him? We are there shouting. Why? Our sins were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. We are still shouting and saying, Pilate, 
release Barabbas, release the bad people, but crucify goodness, destroy, because the nature we have is a bad nature. That's what we are shouting with our sins. Imagine we are watching with the crowd that Jesus is hanging on that cross. We are not at the foot of the cross. He is hanging there for hours in great pain for being the righteous one. He had committed no sin. We are there. He is there for your sake and for mine. For the whole people, for the whole world. He is enduring those pains in his body. The anguish of his soul and abandonment in the spirit because Father God himself had looked away at that moment. Because he was carrying the sins of the whole world on his body. What did we do? You are now at the cross. What do we do? No, we are jeering. We don't sympathize. We are mocking him with our sins. Each time we sin against God, we mock God. Not one person, not even those he had healed. Not even his disciples. Nobody was stepping up to say, this man is innocent. He shouldn't be hanging on the cross. And when they wanted water, what did they give him? God to drink. Sour drink. Because sin is indeed very grave. Because it leads to eternal death. Have you suddenly realized that it's our sins that have led him to the cross? Have you? If you have, are still at the cross. That we nailed him to the cross. And he couldn't come down because he knows that he had to finish what he came to do. At the cross now, I plead with you to surrender your life to him this minute. The one who went to the cross to die, this minute surrender wherever you are. That is the true repentance. As you make your surrender, repent of your sins. Make a promise wherever you are now that you will make a U-turn from a life of sin from this minute. Praise the Lord. Salvation is yours today. Hear the word of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. If you, have, if you are nearly at the cross now and crying out in repentance. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So if you have believed that he died for your sins, and you are at the cross at this minute. You have become a child of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells me also. That you are indeed now a child of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes. No matter who we are. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. We are going to read John chapter 3 verse 3. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. That is the point. At the cross is where you are born again. By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 1 verse 12. Believing that he's your savior and your Lord. And that he died for you. Because all have sinned, according to Romans chapter 3 verse 23. And fallen short of the glory of God. So let me tell you what has happened. Why today is different in your life. Or you've done it before. But did they tell you, was it at the cross? Did you really repent? So this is what has happened. Why Christ said you must be born again. And the Jewish leader who came, Nicodemus, could not understand. Because these are spiritual matters. At the moment of that repentance at the cross, you acknowledge your guilt and recognition that Christ indeed died for you. You accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith. And as you confess with your mouth what you have come to believe. The moment you did that, the Holy Spirit enveloped you. And made your spirit anew. Remember your spirit died. The spirit of an unregenerated person, a fallen person is dead. 
they made it alive, you now have a new living spirit. One that is attuned only to the things of God. That's what you have today. Praise the Lord and thank God for it. That's why he said you must be born again. That's the meaning of being born again. At the cross. Repenting of your sins and accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. Believing by faith that indeed your sins put him there. That's why today you have a new life. Praise the Lord. But though you have a new spirit, and I want to whisper, your soul you resist is with that sheep of your person. I whisper. Let me shout it now. You have a new spirit, but your soul is going to resist its leadership. The human being is comprising of body, soul, and spirit. But remember, the spirit was there before. Today it has revived. It's come. It's new. And it wants to assert itself. But the soul is saying, no, you are not going to do it. Because for many years, your soul had acquired so many bad evil habits. Its resistance to this new spirit in the new person in Christ will form our teaching next week. You don't want to miss it. Because this is where many people lose their salvation again. Because in the battle between the spirit and the soul, they give up. Because it's not one battle. There will be many battles. Until the end, until you meet Christ in glory. But we are going to show you how to win battles between your new spirit in Christ and your soul still waged with the world for so many years. It had so many bad habits. So many bad things. And it will resist. But then, we'll tell you how you are going to overcome. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Our Father and our God. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Thank you for the word you are giving me to give your children wherever they are. Both those who have not yet repented and those who have. And now wherever this broadcast is listening to or viewed, Father God. Meet them at their points of need, O God. Open their eyes and their hearts as they embrace your son, O God. Envelop them with your love, which is already there. Help them to understand and to grow. Reboot them enemy for their sex, O God. Father, you know them. They are your children. Or they are going to be your children. Help them, Lord, to grow. And let them run from the wolves who are masquerading as pastors and Jehovah's who are building empires for this earth, who are promoted the message of the flesh rather than the message of the kingdom. Help them, Lord Jehovah, and may they continue in the grace that you have given us and become centers of goodness and mercy in their neighborhoods. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon them, upon their families. Father, visit them. You visited us 33 years ago, my wife and myself. Because when they see, when they have that personal encounter with your son Jesus, they will never be the same again. They will never be the same again. They will never be the same again, Father God. Therefore, I pray. Visit them. As many as will open their hearts this day, or whatever, whenever this broadcast is viewed, visit them. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Thank you for joining us in today's live broadcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch this message again. Remember, subscription is free. You can also watch it on Facebook. We are going to download this message, upload this message, sorry, to Facebook and some, some other media. Invite your friends. Share the message with them. It is free. But it's a message about eternal life, about your life hereafter. Praise the Lord.